are. You are. Amazing. It's so good. You did it. You did it. Good job. Boom. Boom. Okay, if we could stand right here, please, okay, Sarah. Sorry. Hey. I'm excited. This is a two time Olympian. Sarah Hildebrand. Sarah, can you tell me the difference between the first time that you were an Olympian and now? It, it, was it the tournament or is it just this feeling? Does it feel the same? Does it feel different? Tell me a little bit about it. Totally different, and it's scary because, you know, I had a somewhat successful um, Olympics last quad. And so when it felt so different, I'm like, uh oh, am I not on track? You know, it felt so different. But with that said, I also don't want to be the same. I didn't succeed. I want, I have to evolve. I have to change. And just because change feels uncomfortable doesn't mean it's wrong. And so leaning into all of that and, and trusting myself and my team, and it's been huge. And I think I made some really, really big strides that will help change that metal color. <laughs> you know, your high school coach at the let us how he actually tried to break you when he first met you when he wanted to play something or wanted to wrestle. So take us back to how you overcame that and why you did not. It was hard. I remember sitting down with my dad being like, counting down the days till wrestling is over. And he's like, why are you doing this? He's like, if you're sitting here counting down till it's over, why are you here? And I was like, why am I here? And then it was kind of like a switch went off in my head. Like, all right, I'm here. Let's be here. Like, let's stop crossing off the days till I'm done, you know? And kind of stuck through that. And, uh, you know, next season he was in with me at the room at 4 a.m. And he's been with me for 20 years since. You know, can you talk about, um, you know, your training partner, your brother, talk about how much he has impacted your life and this is almost like a family story? Yeah, it absolutely is. My sister actually moved out to train with me um, for Tokyo Olympics. Little did we know the world was going to shut down and she was going to be living with me full time, training partner in the garage. Um, and that kind of really just kind of let that like light bulb up in my head like, oh wait, hold on. My brother finished actually here at Penn State his career and I was like, Hey, you want to come to Colorado? And he agreed, you know, he's the absolute best. He's really just offers the most amazing energy. He's he's the greatest human being. And to be around like somebody like that, you just puts into perspective how, you know, not huge these things are and how much bigger it is to just be a really, really great human. What does your prep look like from now until the summer? You know, it's a lot of feel. I'm going to lean into some intuitiveness. Uh, but this next month or so is going to be pretty uncomfortable from a learning standpoint. We're going to go back into picking things apart. We're going to have to get comfortable with critiques uh, before we kind of lay off the critique end and, and just kind of get, you know, in good feeling, smooth, sharp, and stuff like that. So not my most favorite part of training. Nope, not my most favorite, but that's what's on the horizon. Sir, you're only born for the census, but anybody from Japan. Yeah. talk about how USA is going to talk about yeah, I mean, it's a tall order for sure, you know, but uh, I really do believe we have the group of people around us, who, whoever makes that team is this, we have a, a team so much bigger than these six spots, you know what I'm saying? And people are coming, you have young people like Audrey just wrestled, who are just up and coming, pushing us older people, and it's just a really beautiful cycle, and uh, I think you're seeing the depth of women's wrestling in the States grow, and that's, that's going to be it. What did you matches with them? Um... You know, Yui Sasaki, she's the best wrestler on the planet. Uh, but with that said, I, you know, I, I think I can take it to her. I don't think she has anything special. I think we give them too much credit when we step on the mat, and I believe in myself. You're training with your brother now, but you're training with your mom. Is that right? Yeah! Can you tell me what time period and, and what, what you did, with, what, why you did that? When I first started wrestling, I wrestled on the all-boys team, so my mom needed to come in when it was just me and my coach training in the morning. Um, just school rules, you know, and so my mom was there, but my coach was too big for me to do the moves, so my mom would step in, and yeah, I would just wrestle her, she'd leave with all these bruises, so yeah, it started with my mom, has gone to my sister, now my brother, it is a family affair. I know about the Eric Otto tattoo, but the other one on your heart, what's that? Okay, this is Oot, he is, you know, my smiley face, and uh, yeah, you know, I just want to keep an upbeat, positive attitude, and and just really lean into the like brighter side of life and I like I like when they raise this hand and you know that's kind of looking my opponent in the face. <laughs> Who's your favorite artist? Like uh, music artist? Ooh. I don't know, I'm really into Noah Khan right now. Love Led Zeppelin. So Greta Van Fleet also kind of ties in there. I love that. So before this I was listening to Noah Khan before I stepped on that today. So all my love. That's that's the song. Is there anything that you're going to be different? Yeah, leading into Tokyo, I was really like hard-headed, you know, stubborn to a fault. Uh, 
wouldn't listen to my body, just trained through walls because I thought that's what it took. And it's taken a lot of step back from that and just being like, whoa, 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 we're good. We've put in the work the last 20 years. We can listen to our body, rest when we need to rest so we can push when we need to push. And uh, I've really finally started buying into that more. So uh, I think that will help a lot. Has your body settled into 50 kilos or is it still <laughs> You know, it's a fight for sure, I'm not going to lie, but with that said, uh, the fight up here isn't as rough anymore, you know, it's part of my job, i got to get it done, so there's a lot less, you know, bitching and moaning about it because we got to make weight, so I, I think it's kind of crazy, I can just go into this kind of stone cold, my brother calls it surgical mode, and get the weight off, step on the scale, and move on to the what we're really here for. You've talked a lot about Tokyo, but in the three years since Tokyo, what's the biggest obstacle that you've had to it was really hard coming back after Tokyo. I suffered a really rough loss in the semis that I did not take enough time to process. Immediately jumped into another world championships two months later. Set back my whole healing process, really a whole year. So 2022 was uh, just spent like recovering. So um, just kind of getting back to a state where like I wanted to be on the mat. I think I was pretty burnt out and I was having to recover from being burnt out while still trying to win a world title. So it was, it took a long time. Do you want to go for the 28th? Ah, no comment. <laughs> Congratulations.